What is up, fellow Sambarians? Another great rainy day in Washington. It's the best. It just rains and rains and rains. <laughs> I wanted to move here, so I can't. I can't complain. And I only wanted to move here because I was ready for some rain. I was tired of the sun every single day in San Diego. But now it's just the complete opposite. There's no sun, and it's always raining. Okay, rant over. Um, Today, if you are planning on doing your motor mounts on your Subaru Sandbar, you have probably seen this. Um, you have probably bought mounts from me, so you are probably aware of this. Maybe you haven't done it yet because you're not sure how to do it, but today is going to be the day I'm going to show you how to do this. So at some point in time, probably around 96, 97, stuff changed on the sandbars. A lot of stuff changed from 90, I think in 96 or 97, a lot of stuff changed. Just random little things changed. So one of them being, I mean, there's a lot, but one of them is that motor mount right here in the very back that is bolted to your transmission, okay? You usually can't see it unless, of course, you do an aftermarket exhaust that I just made a video on installing yesterday. You usually can't see it because it's behind a heat shield, but it is 99% of the time worn out because by the time it gets here, it's almost 30 years old, 25 years old, whatever. Um, that mount, that bushing, that rubber is sitting on the little safety stop on the bottom, which is okay. I mean, my van, it is sitting on the safety little rubber on the bottom because if I were to change it, it would throw my exhaust out of whack. It is literally built within a quarter inch of the latch gate opening. So if I put the new motor mount in, it's going to raise the exhaust tip up and then I can't open up the door anymore. So it is what it is. But if you got AC and worn out mounts, um, the slightest load on the engine can cause a lot of vibrations and it's really annoying. Um, I've done all the other two on my van and it's fine, but this back one is always just good to replace regardless. So I have done the other two on this one. I just did that one yesterday. I did the one on the front yesterday and we need to do this back one. So like I was saying, stuff changed, 96, 97. Um, they decided to stop making this mount a bolt-on mount. They actually started welding the mount to the cross member. So it looks like this. Here's your holes. It bolts down it's real easy. I don't know why they changed it. It's really stupid because now it's way more difficult to change this bushing. They did at some point allow you to buy that whole cross member, which I've tried to purchase quite a few times and they come back um, NLA no longer available. So because I was just going to replace the whole cross member. But since we cannot replace the whole cross member, uh, we just have to do the bushing. So what we have to do is take this bushing that I sell that is still available, that bolts on, we need to cut it open. So we'll cut it, cut the mounts on both sides here, pull it apart, get the inner bushing out. And then that one on there, we need to either cut out or pound it out, whatever. This is my first time doing this. So you know, I'm not new to the whole uh, bushing press game. That's not unfamiliar to me. I have to do that on my Mini Cooper, the BMW version of the Mini Cooper. All those bushings are pressed in there. Really, really annoying. Um, but it is what it is. So again, this one needs to be pressed in there, which we will do. So uh, this video is going to be for you guys who want to do that rear mount right here. If you feel like changing it and you are unlucky and have the welded on version um, the bolt on version is so easy it goes on in like 10 minutes this one is a whole lot of work so anyways um that's what we're going to be doing today so if you're in the mood to do your motor mount this should help you out um you will see this is how it's supposed to sit this is way up here on the upper half of the mount but you will notice on your sandbar it's probably it's probably sitting like this, basically upside down because it's worn out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to replace that one. And um, hopefully this is helpful. So first, I'm going to go take my Sawzall 
and we're gonna cut this um, section in half and pull the old bushing out and then we will get on to that guy. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so here is our bushing. So basically, since we're gonna put this one in, I cannot paying attention to where I'm putting that. Um, since we're gonna putting this one in ourselves, we have to just make sure that we put it in the same exact way that the other one is, which basically this little guy is gonna be on the bottom because that is like our safety bump that it will rest against when it starts to sag. So that was actually very easy. I just cut the one side here and then kind of just hit it with the hammer a few times, open it up and it actually just slid right out. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go put this in the freezer and we'll let this get really cold and freeze up a little bit. Just be careful when you're doing it. I kind of scored it a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna ruin the bushing at all. Um, I'm gonna put it in the freezer so it gets really cold and then I can hit heat up the existing mount and maybe slide it in like we're doing a new like crank pulley or something. Sometimes you gotta heat up the um, pulley and freeze the crank shaft so then it slides on and it expands. But we'll freeze this and heat up the mount and then hopefully we can just get it to slide right in and doesn't require much um, beating. So. Let's get on to removing it from the truck now. You need to remove the exhaust system because we need to have complete access to that mount. So let's get this off. Okay, so we're gonna need to put a jack. Um, I was like, what's in my pocket? <laughs> I got the bushing, I was confused. Why had a big lump in my pocket? Um, we're going to go ahead and put a jack underneath the transmission here so we can make sure we keep it from falling. And we'll just put it underneath the skid plate on the, the differential. That is going to be the best location for that. Since we're going to be working on this side of the engine, it's better to be as far over as possible. So we'll get it up. And it's got a lot of up to go because it was so saggy. And you'll know uh, when you've hit a good spot for the up because it'll make the bolt want to just slide out. Otherwise, it'll be really difficult to remove that bolt if it's under pressure because it's crooked. So that was a little bit too high. We'll just go down a little bit. Let's see, still a little too high. There we go, perfect. So that's how the bolt should come out. It's at a good height. Otherwise you can get yourself a good pry bar. This one's Matco, but you don't have to get Matco. Um, and you can get underneath like the bell housing and the cross member here and pry the engine around and you can get it to move. Um, so we'll set that bolt aside. Now what we need to do is there is the clutch lever spring. We need to take that spring off because we need to remove this entire bracket here that is going around the uh, mount so we can get access to that bushing. So I got to get some pliers and we'll work on getting that mount out. So I got the clutch lever spring undone real easy some pliers pull that off let's get to the transmission so four nuts have been removed we should be able to get this bracket off okay so i i turned off the camera um had a few unsafe YouTube guideline words to say, <laughs> but I finally got the bracket off. Basically what I did was I unbolted it, obviously, um, mess around with the height a little bit 
Um, I got a pry bar. I got a big one. Size does matter at this point. And I got it in between the bracket and the transmission housing. And I pried it, which then pushed it off of these threaded studs, which again is super annoying. These should have been bolts, not threaded studs, because it makes it a pain in the butt to pull these out. But I kind of see, just in case, it's a safety reason probably that I want the bolts to back out and then this falls off. The studs, at least, it's going to be sitting on the studs. But I pried it off out past the studs, which then kicked the front end around. And I kind of tapped it with the hammer a little bit, and then it just slips off. Putting it back on is going to be another story. Uh, we'll worry about that when we get there. But, uh, yeah, at least we have this off. And if worst comes to worst, um, I will uh, unbolt the cross member, and we'll do it that way. But a little bit of um, prying will get that bracket off. Okay, so now... This guy is going to be pretty rusted in there, it looks like. So I'm going to try tapping it out with a chisel set right now. And if that doesn't work, I'm just going to put my um, saws all in there and just cut it out. So let's get figuring that out. Persistence pays off. So after some nice beating, <laughs> uh, I got myself a chisel set and I used the punch and I used a chisel uh, basically to just hammer. And then I kept spraying printed penetration, God dang, penetration lubricant inside as I was knocking it down so it could really start to soak around it. Um, and once all the lube got around it it just literally popped out so it might have a little bit of rust build up around the edges and that's what you really have to knock knock down but yeah i use a chisel and a hammer and just be ready for a nice little battle so do whatever you want to do if you have a hydraulic press then you could take this whole cross member off and press it out but like i said i don't have one of those quite yet so we're going to deal with what we got and this is literally the last thing this truck is in here for, and then the customer can take it. But I have the other bushing in the freezer. Um, I'm going to try and heat this up as much as I can with the torch. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, um, it will just slide in with not a whole lot of effort. So I'm going to heat that up and let the other bushing continue to cool down. And hopefully we will have a nice clean installation. This is probably doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> but at least I feel like I'm doing something. I don't think it's going to get hot enough. But we could try. We'll find out. If anything, it might make it easier to get it in there. Oh, wow, that is in there, finally. Just uh, took a few good smacks with the hammer. Uh, I would recommend heating that ring up as much as possible and getting the bushing as cold as possible to help with the install. I don't have like a high temp uh, torch or a cutting torch or anything that gets super hot. I mean, I, Maybe if I sat with it with the propane for a while. I suppose I could have got map gas or something. Get a little bit hotter. But it is such a tight fit. That uh, it's going to take some work anyways. So it is in there. Make sure that you put it in the right way. Because that's going to suck to try to pull that thing out. There's no way. Uh, that thing is in there. For good. Which you want your little safety bump stop at the bottom. And straight up and down so now uh we will put the 
the bracket back in there, finagle it in there, and then, uh, yeah, put it all back together. So let's do that. Okay, I just wanted to do a few things before I was going to put the bracket in, but let's wipe the bracket down a little bit, get a little, get it shining. 25 years of JDM dust on there. I suppose if you want to take your cross member off and do this, this would be a really good time to clean this thing and paint it because this cross member is usually really dirty, caked in grime and oil. Um, and it's kind of difficult to clean with everything on it. So if you're going to take your cross member off, that would be a good time to clean it, paint it maybe if you'd want to. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, that is a royal pain in the butt. If you don't want to change that, uh, well, I mean, you, this only took me an hour or so, but if you're not in the mood to fight your sandbar, save it for a day when you're in the mood to fight. Because my goodness, that is a pain in the butt. All right, let's uh, get this guy back on there. This is actually easier to get it back on than it is off because you just have to slide it past uh, the studs. It's a lot harder to get it off because you got to get it out off of the studs. Okay, so we got good, good height right now. Let's just put this guy back on. Okay, got that. Now let's get these guys back on. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Okay. So let's uh let's get the jack put back together real quick. Oh, don't forget, we got to put the clutch lever. I almost forgot about that. What? Why do you keep popping off this? What the heck is going on here? Wow, the hardest thing is to get this stinking spring back on. What the heck is going on here? Heck. There we go. Okay. Ooh, man. I had a cramp in my thigh. All right, my dudes. That is how you do that rear bushing. It is, uh, it is a tough one compared to doing the rest of them. I will, I will say this though: when you do this guy over here, it is probably a good time to do this one at the same time because it allows you to slide the motor to get that mount on. Yesterday, when I did that mount, I did my old method where I actually unbolted the bracket from the engine block. Is it a little bit more work? Maybe, but it's less fighting the engine because you're trying to pry the engine over. This is just unbolting that bracket and then the motor mount slides right in real easy. So if you're gonna do mounts, do these two in the back at the same time to allow you to slide the engine over. The front can be done whenever because that is just raising it up and down. The front is another story that one's real easy as well it can be easy sometimes it's tricky to get the holes to line up but once you find the right angle of the the engine with the jack and pushing um you can get the lines the holes to line up but that guy is a beast so if you're up for a challenge do it if you're not up for a challenge let that uh let that motor mount sit on the safety for the rest of its life <laughs> so that sucker is no fun but at the end of the day, you could take the whole cross member off and you maybe take it to a shop that has a hydraulic press and they can press it in. Or if you're lucky and have a hydraulic press and you can press it in yourself. But yeah, that guy, that sucks. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. This will uh, help me explain to you guys who have asked me countless times how to change that one if it doesn't bolt on. Now I have a video for it. Um, I have all these parts on my website, okgarage.com, so if you would like to do it, um, there you go. Um, usually by the time they get over here from Japan, they're shot and it's time to replace them anyways. So 
I will go ahead and put the exhaust back on and this guy can finally come get his truck because it's all done. This thing got a lot, a lot of work done to it. So um, I'm excited. This thing's going to be like brand new. So anyways, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. OKGarage.com if you need any parts, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you'd like, I'd appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next one.